Monday night on August 10th between 5.30 and 7.30. And then we discussed some personnel issues and some other matters. Um, and then tonight we had another meeting before this one from 6 to 7 in the same context as we had um, I just described and we discussed some personnel issues. And roll call, please. Mrs. Fish. Here. Dr. Katachu. Here. Mr. Gordon. Here. Dr. Gursky. Mr. Huron. Here. Mr. Kirsch. Here. Mr. Riker. Here. Dr. Uasa. Here. Mrs. Eddy. Thank you, Terry. Um, we make a motion to um, accept the meeting minutes from July 15th. Second. Who is first? That'll be a voice. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, second order of business is the Board of Administrative Announcements. Um, I'm first up, Votech. Um, nothing new to report with Votech. However, I know there's a lot of work going on with the same readiness and preparedness that, that we're focused on and all the districts are focused on and all the school systems are focused on. There is a meeting next Tuesday, a uh, formalized meeting, so there'll be more to report on that. Um, that's our next, uh, next um, day of board meeting um, in August. Uh, Mr. Dr. Kitachi, do you have anything else? I'll make a motion to the school site that we have a meeting in July, and I'll make a motion to call this meeting on August 19th. Thank you. And Head Start, Carol, anything? I have a small letter and put together. Under the head start of applying for a non federal share waiver for the 1920 school year due to COBRA, COBRA, the coronavirus. They uh, <clears throat> also, the total non federal shares needed $252,939. The total earned $188,343. The waiver request was $64,596. The start will be offering two different options for returning to school face to face and distance learning. Flexibility in the length of days and number of children per classroom is allowed. Normal school hours will be 8 30 to 2 30. This year's time, due to staggered times of the primary school drop off and pick up, head start hours will be Monday through Friday, 8 45 to 2 15 p.m. This time of year, Head Start will have four face to face classrooms, pre K, and two face to face classrooms, and one virtual classroom. Classroom size will be approximately 10 children. For the start of the school year, children will eat in their classrooms. Outdoor play will be staggered time, and instructional play in different locations. No playground equipment. Staff and children will be required to wear masks except when they're eating. Not able to social distance. Children will be screened prior to boarding the bus and entering the school building. Temperature check, asking parents to help screen questions, virtual inspection of your child. Head Start is looking to return of staff and children. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Next item on tonight's agenda is briefly uh, report, please. All right. Um, enrollment report at this Time we have 
2,216 enrolled in the district, uh, grades K-12. And we have a fairly consistent, a little bit lower, lower in some, so actually, yeah, we're a little bit lower in every level than we were last year with the exception of middle school. Um, so we're still pretty much in the same, same area. We do have students that are, uh, in, are enrolling now. So it's been very, very busy this week. If you wanna look at the, the presentation, uh, I have some comparison charts to show for what's happening in the district regarding e-learning, uh, cyber schools, and uh, homeschooling. So when you look at this chart, you'll see that uh, we have cyber school enrollment in, of 34 students in the outside charter cyber charter schools. They include Agora, uh, 21st century, you can't see that very well. Uh, maybe you can see a little better. PA Cyber, Reach. Uh, Commonwealth Cyber, CCA. Reach and Insight. Reach and Insight. And there's also, do I have Sescue Cyber on there, John? Yes. yes. All right. So there, that's the enrollment for all those various schools. If you look at that enrollment for a child who's in regular education, it, we have to pay the cyber schools. They often advertise that they are free, but they are not free. Your school district tax dollars goes to them. So for 32 students in regular education, it's $407,622.08. And then the additional two students that are in special education, uh, it's $22,569.61. Uh, so it's about, you know, four hundred fifty thousand dollars, actually four hundred fifty-two, if it really came. So uh, that's a significant hit. Now, in the previous years, we've had similar enrollment. So I strongly believe that purchasing and, and buying into the Ironman uh, Cyber Academy Academy that it will be district run has definitely supported us and helped us to reserve some money. And you know that students aren't leaving the district. These are the SPP scores. And what that is, is they are a combination of various assessment scores. Uh, this one's 2018, and it shows the various charter schools and what their scores are. John, you wanna help me with that? Yeah, so Susquehanna Cyber, 28.8. Um, Reach Cyber is 41.4 on their SPP. Uh, PA Cyber is 50.3, Insight PA Cyber is 50.2, Commonwealth of Charter Academy is 56, Agora Cyber is 53.2, 21st Century Cyber is 65.6. So then next you're going to see the SPP scores for the Danville area schools. Our high school is at 89.6, our middle school is 78.3, Liberty Valley is 79.8 and DPS is 73.4. So you need to understand that not any of those cyber schools can even come near what our schools offer in academic achievement. This is also our PSSA scores compared to the other. The blue line is our English language arts. The dark blue line is math and the golden line is science. And as you can see in our three buildings, Danville Primary School would not do this because they don't take PSSAs until grade three. So you can see our three buildings totally outweigh all of them. And Sescu Cyber is not on there because they did not have sufficient uh, data in order to even create a bar. The students that we have, Ricky, who are in cyber, these are a age group that the majority of them fall into, like are they mostly high schoolers too? Go back. What, for Ironman or for Outside. No, we're outside. Go back, John, because it's on there. Okay, see in the bottom, oh, like kindergarten, we have one great Trevor's head there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, there's five seniors and five 10th graders, but you know, so the high school has a little more than the others because, you know, a few more students grade wise, but and that's that. Homeschool, I have the policy written up there for future reference, but basically 
Um, for homeschool, as of August 5th, we had 120, and I honestly have gotten enough, and I think it's about 130 now. Uh, so you can see people have this misconception that it doesn't cost anything in the, the district. It doesn't cost the district anything, therefore, it's not a harm to our taxes. But in reality, we do not receive our daily rate from the school or from the state. So that for 1920 was $2,735 for a student in grade or education and $4,818 for a student who is in special education. So as you can see, uh, with 119 students in regular education, it's $325,465. And for that additional student, then special education is the 4818. So you can see the homeschool numbers there. There are significant numbers. It is oh, more than double what we've had in previous years. Now there is one piece to that with in our policy 137.1, where students who are homeschooled are able to participate in extracurricular activities. In Danville, band is not extracurricular, it is a course. But the policy and prior school boards were wise enough to say if they, a student wants to participate in something extracurricular such as marching band, then they need to participate in the course. So those students who will choose to do that because it is a course will dual enroll. And when they dual enroll, we get about 13% of that child's funding back for the year. Okay. I just thought it was really important to give you guys these numbers and to make it very clear of what's happening in the district and how it's having an impact. $725,000 Yeah, some of that is built into our budget because we had expectations of some of this already, but it's still, people need to know that it does impact your tax dollars. Uh, and the district is trying to do everything humanly possible to make sure that Danville students are educated by Danville educators. Uh, that's why we have three different options and we try to meet the needs of all families in a way that would be most beneficial. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Dr. Boyle. Oh, I I wanted to direct you to the new uh, home, the new web page. We have changed the, the format and the model. I thank Jeff Ryan a great deal because he does all this stuff behind the scenes for me and makes me look really good, but he's really the one that does it. So take a look at that. I also wanted to announce that both the middle school and the Head Start programs both now have Facebook pages of their own, so they keep everything updated. Uh, and that is also very helpful for families and others that are going through those processes. The other item is Head Start summer program. They had their summer program and the little guys come into the school. They did a great job. Uh, they had like five students in the class at a time. We were very careful about that. And then we had home visits for others so that they could, uh, families could still have support. And it would be like a front porch visit where they would talk across outside. It wouldn't be an in-house visit. John just switched that. So if you want to look at the new website, John, do I roll it down? So they know if you scroll down and you can see all the links and all the various things that are coming. So it's our hope to get more pictures on, to get more things rolling so that everyone has uh, a good experience and they can find things more readily. The other part about the Head Start program, I want to read to you a posting that was done by uh, a grandmother whose granddaughter came. She said, we would like to just say a little bit about how well children adapt to changes. We are so proud of our summer program kiddos did wearing their masks the whole time. Children surprise us every day. The world is in such an uncertain time right now. And as adults, we were scared, stressed, and have questions about everything. We have to remember that our kids are going through this with us. Let's try to keep positive outlook on things for them and model safe, healthy behavior. We can't wait to see everyone in the fall. So I thought that was really nice. It was very encouraging. Uh, that, and there's other posts. If you go on the Facebook page, there's one where the grandma uh, talked about, it's a different one, but 
they talked about how the little girl was scared and she was very timid. And after a couple of days, she was like, I gotta go back to school. You know, she was really excited. So that was a good thing. Right now. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Boyle. Okay, now we'll move on to our public comment period. Um, please be advised that this particular public comment period, we uh, restrict the comments to only agenda items. There will be another time at the end of the session to share in some other public comments. And we ask that you state your name and address and we'll monitor to three minutes with, um, with our protocol. And we will, we will try without breaking the, uh, the cadence of, of the discussion or the, the comments to try to let people know when they've got about 30 seconds left. So I guess we'll see that from the one who... Uh, any public comment, please raise your hand. Thank you, Jeff. Looks like no public comment at this time. Okay. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wants to make a public comment? Thank you. All right, we next move on to, we have a presentation tonight. Um, we have uh, the Kevin, Kevin Herrick and Wes Walter from the Friendship Fire Company. Oh, oh, that's what, Who's here? I'm sorry. John? Uh, Chief, Chief Buckenberger. Chief Buckenberger. Okay. Chief Strasser and Paul Sandry. Okay. I'll turn it over to you. You yeah. want to come up to the mic and speak, please? No, you're far enough away. How's that? Great. Good. Okay. First of all, um, as I said, my name is Kevin Strauss. I'm the chief of the Friendship Fire Company here in Danville. Uh, I have with, my, with me tonight um, the Borough Fire Chief, John Buckenberger, and basically our marketing director for um, our endeavor that we're about to take, take on, and uh, that is Paul Sandry. <clears throat> I believe you all have a little presentation in front of you. Where, um, as, as you scroll through that, I'm going to just, just try to hit the highlights of that, okay? So what, basically what we're doing is we're in the process of a fun drive to replace our 2002 ladder truck. Um, it is eight, so it is 18 years old. Um, at the cost of that, when we purchased that in 2002, it was $637,000. The new one today that we're looking at that we have spec now comes in at a little under 1.5 million. So it has more than doubled in cost in, in um, 18 years. Just a little history of the Friendship Fire Company. It's the oldest fire company in Danville. Danville. It was established in 1841. It also has the only ladder truck in Montour County. The current ladder truck is a 2002 Pierce 85 foot rear mount with a 2,000 gallon per minute pump on it, um, a full ground ladder complement, and various firefighting um, equipment. The new piece of equipment that we have spec'd out is a Pierce 100 foot mid-mount ladder truck. Again, at a cost of $1.5 million. So currently our ladder truck at 18 years old is starting to basically neck one dump us. Uh, in October of last year, it was out of service for one month. In December of last year, it was out for two weeks. February of this year, it was out for two weeks. And most recently, it was out in July for a week. I uh, just got the bill for that yesterday at um, $4,800 for a steering box repair. So, and the mechanics that look at it is, the, the, Piece of apparatus is meticulously, meticulously maintained. If something if something goes bad, we have it checked out immediately. And every mechanic that looks at it says it's, it's so well maintained, but it's time to start looking at it. either refurbing it, which is going to cost um, almost the same amount of money, or to start replacing it, which 
start looking at replacing. So that's what we're doing. Um, a couple weeks ago at the Friendship Fire Company, we started a fun drive with a chicken barbecue. You know how many chicken barbecues we're gonna have? They have to raise one point five million dollars. Yeah, a lot of chickens. Yeah, a lot of the chickens gonna go up. So and so what we're gonna ask here is for the school board to take this under consideration at their budget meeting as it comes up, because the borough of Danville can no longer just be the sole provider of the fire protection for the borough of Danville when, when you have a piece one piece of apparatus that's costing one point five million. So what we're gonna what we're gonna ask is that we basically start a community part partnership, and we need the whole community behind us. And what a better way to start that than to have the Danville School District right behind us to do that? If if we could show that from the Danville School District, you know, and as we go around to other entities in the, in the borough of Danville and outside of the borough of Danville, such as Geisinger Medical Center, the Green Thumb Industries. That you know, maybe as, as we kick this off, that you know, someone needs someone needs to start. The Borough Danville's already started. Um, basically, right now to start, we probably have about with the sale of our ladder truck, depending on the price that we will get for that, we probably have about uh, six hundred thousand dollars. So that's that's not a bad start, but a, a long ways to go yet. So the new ladder truck, um, better safety equipment, we'll have on. Uh, such as standard rollover protection, which we don't have on our current ladder truck, airbags, um, better lighting, um, updated updated technology in a computer. You think about your phone, when's the last time you updated your phone and why? Because the technology was, wasn't there anymore. So that's, that, that's a, that sounds a little far-fetched, but that's, that's basically what it is. The computer, the computer programming out of the woods of the new ladder truck is, is phenomenal. We've, we've looked at the trucks um, as demos and they're, they're very good. Along with the new ladder truck, we will, re, we will be able to gain 15 feet of working height. We're going from an 85 foot tower ladder to a 100 foot tower ladder. Um, that's, a, that's a big difference when we're going to, well, to going to schools. With the setback to the schools, that extra 15 feet is going to come in, come in very handy if we ever need it. The old ladder truck is 47 feet long. The new one will be 43 feet. So that's going to help us with maneuverability as we get around town. The old ladder truck has a current complement of ground ladders of 127 feet. The new ladder truck will have a complement of 170 feet. So when we can't raise the, when we can't raise the hydraulic ladder, we'll raise our ground ladders. That's going to take manpower. That's another story. Um, the cameras for the setup um, is just amazing what they what they've done with the technology to have this. So basically, if I pull into the school in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day and it's the parking lot is full, I can look at my cameras and I know where to set it, where I can set my jacks. I can I can put that camera right in between the cars and I can set my jacks up there and set the ladder up. <clears throat> And as um, we talked about the resale value of the truck, the longer we the longer we hold on to it, of course, the more the price drops. Currently, we're, we have hopefully, hopefully we have a buyer. We have someone that's very interested, and I'm thinking if we can get two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars out of it, that we're going to do very good. Hmm. But of course, as the as the old one de um, decreases in price, the new one increases in price. <laughs> Um, the borough of Danville needs a ladder truck in, in the surrounding communities because of the insurance services office rating, which um, affects your homeowner's insurance and your business insurance. Without that, without our, a current ladder, a, a ladder truck in the borough of Danville, we are going to have to rely on the, the town of Bloomsburg or the borough of Northumberland. And now you're looking at uh, possibly 15 or 20 minutes out before they can get here. And you know, in the time of emergency, seconds count. So that's, that's, that's a big one for us. The amount of large structures in the community are growing. Um, you go out Bloom Road and you see the uh, new apartment buildings that are going up that they're putting five new uh, apartments of townhouse buildings in there. The old Kennedy Van Sollen, that building is now gonna be very active with strong industries. Uh, the old GRW building is very active with GPI. 
the old cabinet industry building on Railroad Street is very active with the Jackson Medical Center right now. So all these larger buildings is when you really need your when you need your ladder truck. And it's nice now that you know you move all this, you move the schools basically into the borough of Danville. You know, the primary school and the high school and the middle school. So <clears throat> that's that's all I have questions. Thank you very much. I'm sure the board will take time to discuss this another time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next order of business is our consent agenda items. We'll take action to approve the consent and agenda item. Um, 9.1, 9.2, 12.1 through 12.6, 13.1 through 13.3. Anyone like to remove any of those? Do you discuss separately or? Okay. Can you make a motion? Can you make a motion to? I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the consent on the agenda. Second. Second. Thank you. Mrs. Fish? Yes. Dr. Tachu? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Kirsch? Yes. Mr. Riker? Yes. Dr. Uasa? Yes. Mr. Huron? Yes. Next item of business is school property and supplies. Would anyone like to vote on item 7.1 through 7.4 together, or do we address any of those? Second. Dr. Tachu? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Kirsch? Yes. Mr. Riker? Yes. Dr. Uasa? Yes. Mrs. Fish? Yes. Mr. Huron? Yes. Thank you. We have nothing to put on, nothing on the athletics and activities on the public tonight. Uh, nothing with school and community relations at this time. Uh, moving on to finance. Oh, Oh, that was part of consent. So we'll move on to item 11, the finance. Would you like to vote on the finance items together or separately? Can we take a minute oh, for 11.2? Do you, would you like to come up and speak to the matter for the parcel? Thank you. Hello, I'm Jennifer Wakeman. Oh, am I not plugged there? Very loud, so I'm freaking myself out. I'm Jennifer Wakeman. I'm the executive director of Drive, and we own the property that is just over the hill. It's right off of Railroad Street. Um, it's about 20 total acres that we own that we purchased back in 2017. One of those one piece of that one building, one parcel that was highlighted on the map that was sent to you has been in the Keystone Opportunity Zone program with the state since 2004. It is a tax incentive program. Essentially, um, if a company moves into that building, they can take advantage of this. They have to enroll in the program with the state. It affords them a number of tax incentives, including not paying corporate net income tax. That's really the big one. Property tax, which is why we're here. We've also been to the borough and to the county. All three taxing bodies must approve any designation. This is an extension that we're asking for. Um, there are also some additional taxes. Uh, they don't pay sales, state sales tax, things like that. So it's a very significant incentive for companies. We purchased the property. Sorry, purchased the property in 2017, and we are working with a couple of different companies right now who are looking at the property. 
Um, but having that KOZ extension for seven years, which is that's the minimum term that you can do this, would be a significant benefit. As you all know, the state has poured a lot of money into coronavirus and, and small business and all sorts of other things in the last several months. There are very few incentive programs left from the state. And we feel like this is something that's very important for us to be able to market this facility to a company that's going to come in, create jobs, create opportunity, expand, ultimately expand the tax roll. This is a seven year uh, lifespan on this. So it would extend till 2027. And at that time, then the property goes back on the tax rolls because you cannot re-enroll a property once it is um, someone is cited in there. It must be a vacant property. For example, the thing that, so we've had one on that property. Um, also, there has been one on the TRW property for uh, the same period of time. That one obviously we have to let expire at the end of 2020 because it is full. So that tax benefit comes to an end. But you can sort of, TRW is a great example of you can see what has happened um, as uh, companies have come in and been able to take advantage of that. So I wanted to present that to you all. There's a resolution that is required from the school board. The borough council has already approved it. The county commissioners have already approved it. So I bring it to you for your consideration this evening. Are there any questions I can answer for you? So you said seven years minimum. Correct. So the strategy not to go longer than seven years with no uncertainty. Indeed, and I wouldn't ask for longer. You can actually do a 10 year extension. That's sort of not the norm. I wouldn't recommend it at this point. I think seven years gives a company um, a good long time to come in, get cited, take advantage of the program, see those benefits, make the investment. Anything longer than that, I think is unnecessary at this point. Um, and, and to be fair, as I said, this property has been in the program since 2004. When Metso owned it, they weren't actively looking to sell it or lease it. I mean, it was available, but it, it was not readily on the market. So while it has this, we've seen the most action on it since we bought it in 2017 because we've been actively marketing it, putting it out there. We've had numbers of site visits, things like that. So this would just be a real benefit um, for us to be able to put somebody in here who will create jobs and um, we think it's we think it's going to be important to the marketing of the site. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve items eleven point one and eleven point two. I make that motion. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mr. Riker. Yes. Dr. Iwasa. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Dr. Katachu. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Perry. Um, item 12 on tonight's agenda is personnel. Oh, no. Item 12.7. Um, board will take action to approve the district accounts and the resources contract between Danville Area School District and Jonathan Adams, effective August 12, 2020, as presented. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mr. Riker? Yes. Dr. Iwasa? Yes. Mrs. Fish? Yes. Dr. Tachu? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Huron? Yes. Item 12.8 and 12 through 12.13. We have a motion to act on those together. I'll make that motion. Second, thank you. 
Mr. Riker. Yes. Dr. Wassa. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Dr. Tachu. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Item 13, policy and insurance. Oh no, we did that in 13.4. Um, do we want to take the motion on 13.4 through 13.6 together or separate? I'll make a motion to approve 13.4 through 13.6. Dr. Uwasa. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Dr. Dikachu. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mr. Riker. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Thank you. Item 14, transportation. Board will take action to approve the bus driver list for the 2021 school year as presented. Second. 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 Dr. Iwasa. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Dr. Katachu. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mr. Riker. Same. Mr. Huron. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Mrs. Amy Willoughby, who has been transferred from the assistant high school principal to the primary school principal. Um, we're very fortunate to have her as an experienced administrator step into a building uh, at a time like this. So, Amy, do you have anything to say for us? Sure. <laughs> I, I want to say thank you very much to all of you. Um, Dr. Excuse me, Dr. Boyle, thank you, and all of the administrators. I appreciate all of your mentorship and all of your direction. I um, appreciate all of you very much. And I can see further, even though I'm a little crazy right now. <laughs> so I thank you all. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, item 15, are there any board concerns or any items that we need to put forward for the next few weeks? Um, I'd like to make a, a motion for us to um, revise the, or the uh, plan to allow for the administrative team to alter the school calendar as needed based on information that we're getting on COVID on a day to day basis. Hey, Mrs. Fish. Yes. Dr. Katachu. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mr. Riker. Yes. Dr. Wassa. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Thank you. And now we open up for our second public comment period. Uh, same same protocol. Does anybody like to see how share the public comment? Yes, we have uh, Kelly Shaw. Um, please state your name and address, and you're limited to three minutes. My name is Kelly Shaw. I live at 82 Kingsley Avenue in Danville. And we are interested, and I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear for the board concerns and items for next meeting agenda. Did that pertain to the district calendar? Because my question pertains to whether or not there's going to be an updated district calendar, but voices were a little bit muffled, so I couldn't fully understand what was being said just before this. Um, that was to give permission to administration to make changes 
if it becomes warranted. At this time, there's no been, there's no change in having been decided. Okay, we we're just trying to coordinate some various family things, and so we wanted to know if we could plan on the various uh, PD days that are currently listed, uh, Bloomsburg Fair days, no school days, the Act 80 day. Uh, wondered if those were still happening since front loading of professional development was what we understood was going to happen and we wanted to make sure that we didn't plan for those students to be away if in fact that was going to be changed and they were going to have classes. I cannot give you a definitive that it won't change so you know I would suggest you wait a while before you make definitive plans. Do we have any sense of when we might be able to know that? This is specifically for custody, um, visitation with biological parents. Would you call my office, please, and we can discuss it? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, are there any other folks out there? Uh, any other public comment? P please raise your hand on Zoom. At this time, there are no other public comments. Are there any in the room? Okay. Um, I do, I would like to make a quick comment um, before we move to the start asking for adjournment. I sincerely want to say that um, from everything I've experienced through the short duration part of this, this school board team and what I've seen in this district, it's absolutely amazing and sometimes gets unnoticed how many little things that get done and how much commitment, focus, and dedication we see in this team. And I, and I thought about this a little bit even in the context of when Dr. Boyle showed some of the statistical difference between the level of education that we experience here in Danville. To me, that says everything. And sometimes it gets unnoticed, these little things, but I'll tell you from my seat and from what I've seen, we have an amazing team continue to aspire to make us the best of the best. And we continue to aspire to be what everybody else would like to look, like, look at and like to be like. And to that, I'm, I'm sincerely grateful to have an opportunity to be part of a board team and to be supported by the administration team and balance of the teachers and everybody else in this district. It's absolutely amazing. And, and I just would like to say thank you to all those folks that are in this room, your teams, and all those things that may not never, not always get noticed. So from, from me to everybody else. Okay, so move on to last but not least, certainly. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. I do, I've been listening weeks. I just wanted to say Every second. I'll, I'll second. Okay, boys. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. You turn. <laughs>